Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, Scott in the brain. You can turn it down now. We don't know how to make an entrance on my uh, Paul and I are in Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm really, really excited that you guys joined the live stream. I'm wondering, Paul, now that I'm seeing it, maybe we should raise it up um, like a box. Do we, could we do that? Is that weird? Yeah, maybe it's fine. I'm like way above the camera. Can you lift the camera up at all? Like, oh, it's all right. Oh, you can hear me. Hold on one sec. Okay, I think we're here. Oh, you can hear me. Hold on. Can you hand me this? Oh my god. Poor you guys. Hold on. I'm destroying your ears. Sound. Mute. And then settings. I didn't know how that worked. Okay, sound. Media off. Okay. We're back on. Okay. You guys still there? Did I destroy your hearing? I'm trying to be able to read the comments if I can. Um, okay, so you can see, I might just keep it like that then, if you guys are all right with that. Um, okay, so I'm going to play you some music. Uh, my name is Gail and Lee. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, a lot of you on here are friends, I'm sure, but there might be some people from other places. And um, I play traditional fiddle music and original songs using this looping pedal. And it's a little box uh, next to me in my wheelchair, and I push down on a button and record live, and then when I let go and play it back. So I'm gonna demonstrate um, a tune for you. This is called Swallowtail Jig. It's a traditional Irish tune. So let me know if you can hear everything okay. I'll check with you after this tune. So here we go. Thank you. 
Okay, cool. So that is Swallowtail Jig. It's an Irish traditional tune uh, with the looping pedal, and that's on my first album, All the Roads That Lead Us Home. Um, weirdly, I'm like more nervous for this live stream than I am for most regular shows. I think it's just a different environment. So uh, how are you guys doing? Hope everybody is staying in place and being safe and taking care of yourselves and the people that you love. Um, and that you're finding cool ways to pass the time. I think the music community has been really fun to watch, uh, not just the stuff like, you know, live shows, but just lots of different resources that people are sharing. And so it's been an interesting and cool time to be um, around and like alive. I don't know, hopefully we will recover from this quickly um, so that it's a distant memory pretty soon, but um, but there's a lot of resilience happening too, and so that's encouraging to see. So, um, so I think I'll do another tune, uh, and then I'm gonna take a little interlude to show you guys um, our dog Clara, just because why not? I'm in my apartment, and um, I think I tweeted out to Stephen Colbert that I really wanted him to watch the show. Um, not sure, 99.999 percent sure that he won't be watching the show, but. I promised I would show him the sting replica sword I got from my little brother. So I'll do that eventually. Um, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. And <laughs> I used to work at a camp. And at one time, my friend, who's really tall, her and I led a Lord of the Rings skills camp uh, class. And so in that skills class, we, like, made lemon bread and found... Uh, like drops the ring in the Mordor eventually, and there was a lot of Lord of the Rings action, and so I dressed up as Frodo every day for five days, and she dressed up as Gandalf. So I have a big fond spot for that. So as a joke, my brother bought me this sting replica um, a couple of well, I don't know many years ago at Christmas. So and then uh, I'm gonna have three jokes for you. So there's a lot packed in this hour. So I'm gonna go ahead. With the next tune, this is called Watch the World Unfold. It's on the second album, um, the songs we sing along the way. So here we go. Ready. 
So you're all like watching. Hi, here we go. Uh, That's another tune, uh, one that I wrote on the songs we sing along the way. That's called Watch the World Unfold. I'm going to check my phone to see if there's any, like, questions or comments uh, real quick and then do another tune. Oh. Yay. Okay, so people are just in a good mood. Good job down there on the little... Uh, YouTube chat roll. Um, I think I'll do another tune and then maybe we'll 
take our intermission to introduce you to the dog. How does that sound? Um, this song is called um, Let It Go. It is a song, it's one of the very first songs I wrote. Um, basically, remember being on the bus, being like, oh man, I'm writing a song. I should go to work and finish this. So I excused myself to use the bathroom and then I actually just went in the hallway and wrote the rest of this tune. So this is called Let It Go. It is not from the movie Frozen nor affiliated in any way, um, but it's my version about letting go of the things that don't serve you anymore. Is everything okay? You wanna? Oh, we're gonna raise up the computer. I think that, yeah, let's try it. Um, if you've got one. Husband Paul, you see him back there. He doesn't wanna be in this video, but he accidentally was just now. <laughs> And making of this video. Okay, we're raising it up. Don't get motion sickness. Oh yeah, and then maybe straight push the screen a little. Well, not just the actual screen until it's done. Yeah. And then back up the computer a bit until back all the way, and then tilt the computer a hair forward. There you go. I don't know what you guys can see now. That looks a little clearer. You can't see my wings. Oh, see, there's part of it. There's a wing back there. Okay, so I'm gonna start, let it go now. Thank you. 
Okay, that's Let It Go, the non-frozen version. Um, so before I forget, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you, not only for tuning in um, across the country or wherever you all are, um, because we had to cancel that tour out to Colorado, um, and we won't be doing a bunch of school gigs later this month, unfortunately, and you know a lot of things are changing, so thank you for doing this with me, um, taking part in this show, and then also... Um, Thank you for being so generous. A lot of you donated on the Eventbrite link um, that's in the description of this video, and it's really going to make the next couple months a lot less scary. So I really appreciate uh, all your generosity. Um, I don't want to do a ton of live shows that have ticket links because I think we have to spread the love, but this is going to kind of keep us uh, at homeostasis, and so I just really, really appreciate um, your guys' generosity. Um, and I think now, Paul, can you help me reach my sting? <laughs> I just have to, in case, you know, there's a 0.001% chance that Stephen Colbert will eventually sure. see this video. I know I might need your help to take it out. This is like, it's heavy duty, man. It's like, I don't believe in firearms in America, but sting is pretty intense. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, it's really sharp, actually. So uh, that is... True, but look at this is sting. So if ever Stephen Colbert sees this video, I really do have a sting replica, and I really was Frodo every day at my summer camp when I was a counselor, and it was a good time in my life. So this one says it's made in Pakistan, but I think they mean <laughs> by what is it? Who's the ones that make it in Lord of the Rings? I'm getting my Harry Potter confused. Oh no, that's terrible. It was well, definitely not made in Pakistan. It's made. In Lord of the Rings land. So here you go, Paul. <laughs> and then now we'll just introduce you to Clara real quick because, you know, she's the cutest dog in the world. And then I'll get back to music. Where is she, though? She's like hiding. I bet she's on that chair. She's so lazy. She sweeps all the time. <laughs> she's scared. Sorry to yell in the mic, but she was like, why are you waking me up? So this is Clara. And Paul. Sorry, Paul, you're in it for real. Isn't she the cutest puppy? Her name is Clara. She's 10 years old. We love her very much. Uh, when we're on the road, she stays with my parents. They call her their grand dogger. And so this is her television debut, I think. So there we go. Anyways, going to do another tune for you now. Uh, and then I'll save the jokes for the end. Don't let me forget. I have three jokes for you. Compliments of my dad. So here we go. This is the song I entered into the Tiny Desk Contest. It's called Someday We'll Linger in the Sun. Let's hope the dog doesn't do anything too ridiculous. Oh, no, she's just going to go back to sleep. Perfect. Here we go. Oh, somebody said she looks a bit cavalier. That's because she is a cavalier. Um, she is... A black and tan one, obviously. She had a hernia, so we got her discounted. <laughs> I mean, so a long time ago, we saw she is just our pet dog, and we love her. So here we go. Thank you. 
We picked the fruit, it seemed a lie. I'll never know which way was right. Now side by side, we face the night. And I love you. And I love you. We walked the pier and back again. It was the most scared I've ever been. You held my hand until the end. And I love you. And I love you. Don't tell me we've got time. The sun will see for life. It slips away when we pay no mind. We pull the weeds out till the dawn. Near be to time to carry on. Someday we'll linger in the sun. And I love you. And I love you. Okay, so that is Someday It Will Linger in the Sun. Um, I've got three jokes for you now. I mean, this is basically a variety show. Got the animals, got the circus things, such as swords. I don't really know what those qualify for. And the jokes. So the first joke is, I feel bad for parallel lines. They have so much in common, but they'll never meet. Did that make sense to you guys? Okay. My husband's not uh, laughing. That's okay, though. <laughs> Maybe he is. He, this is quite the silliest part of the show. Okay, so the next one is... Um, let me remember it. <laughs> oh, what's the next one? I wrote it down. I'm going to have to look. Oh, yeah. I invented a new word. Plagiarism. That's a good one. Um, and then what's the last joke I'm about? Let me remember Hold on, I should not be a stand-up comedian. I don't know how people like Maria Bamford do it because I basically would die, as Evan says right now. Hold on, let me go find my joke. Do you remember what it is? I'm looking, I'm looking. Hold on, guys, finding my joke. I mean, basically, you're not tipping me to be a comedian, obviously, or I would be good at this. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was addicted to the hokey pokey. But I turned myself around. <laughs> um, basically, my dad is really good at jokes. He has some that are not suitable for, I mean, he's not, they're not gross. They're just not ones I'm going to tell, but they're hilarious. So 
look up some jokes. That's a good use of the time in coronavirus land where we just are at home. Make yourself laugh. Go watch Maria Bamford's new special, Weakness is the Brand. It was hilarious. That's something I did recently, in addition to watching the Ask My Mom show. So there's a lot of great ways to spend the time, paint, get outside, uh, read, meditate, whatever you like to do, um, and listen to music, which brings me back to the regularly scheduled program. I'm going to do a couple more tunes for you. This one is called um, The Long Way Around, and it's the most recent song uh, that I have written. And it's about friendships that take work, but are worth it in the end. <clears throat> now I'm like, how do people do stand up? That is terrifying. I don't think, nope, terrifying. But good job to all of you who are brave enough. So here is the long way around, going back to music forever. When two souls meet and the whole world feels new, share my life sweet, all colors bright and true, and there is laughter, and there are good things growing everywhere. And I'm happy to be in this place with you. And I'm happy to be in this place. Down this road with you. No, I don't want to go down this road. I want to go, but I can't. And I won't learn to so Up the woods that I broke open with you. Cause I knew and I chose. And I don't feel at home in this world anymore. No, I don't feel at home in this world. Mm -hmm. 
Our hearts in time, try not to burn the careful ties that bind us together. And I'm taking the long way around to you, and I'm taking the long way around. And I'm happy to be in this place with you. And I'm taking the long way around. Okay, so that is the long way around. Um, I think the next song I'm going to do uh, is going to be called um, Boys of Blue Hill. This is a happy fiddle tune. Don't have a ton of happy tunes. You gotta like stretch them out throughout the hour, put them here and there so that people don't get too depressed and then leave. So this is a happy one. Um, I love playing the Irish tunes especially because it's a tradition that goes back so far and there's so much um, you know, reverence for it and people, it's such a part of Irish culture. And then to be able to play it over in Ireland um, a couple times, which I've been there three or four times now. Um, it's just a really neat thing to be blending this old traditional culture with the new technology of a looping pedal, and it's a really fun thing to do. Um, this song in particular is a definitely Irish, but the first time I played it in Ireland, I introduced it on accident as an English fiddle tune, which you should never do. Uh, do not confuse those two things, and it was a lot of um, explanations about the tune from the audience after that mistake. It was, they were like, the audience was not pleased, but it was kind of hilarious in retrospect. At the time I was like, oh no, I can't believe I just said that. So this is Boys of Blue Hill uh, with the looping pedal. I'm gonna add a teeny bit of rosin, one sec. Oh no, everything. Technology, too much. There we go. Okay, one sec. So how's everybody doing? Did I turn yellow or just my computer screen, Paul? My, uh, is it look normal on the, are you on the thing? It looks normal? Yeah, I think it's here. Okay, it's the screen. I have a nighttime setting in, so in the middle of the last song, uh, the whole screen turned kind of yellow, but. I think it's okay. So, let's see. Oh, thanks for tuning in. No, Irish lads, I read, I read the comment, Irish lads and lasses need to chill. It's totally fine, it's their culture. Also, they still like the tune even if I got it wrong. And uh, there was one time I played it in England, in Manchester, England. And I was in the middle of this tune, and you heard these people in the corner going, yip, yip, yip. And they came up and apologized after the show, and they're like, we're sorry, we're from Ireland, and it just comes out of us, you know? And so, uh, they're, yeah, it's a good, oh, I like the music over there. So here we go. Thank you. 
on Sunday, so I have another, I'm wiping off my violin with my dress, yes, yes I am. Um, so I have a show on Sunday at 2 o'clock as well on YouTube. There's a different link on my profile page and you should be able to find it. Um, and that's a 2 o'clock show so that I'm hoping kids can come and then also people in the UK and Europe will be able to tune in at a reasonable evening hour. Um, I know a few of you are up at midnight right now watching this, but not everybody. So um, so I'm going to try to switch up the set a little bit. So this next one um, is called I Wait, and it is um, about disability rights in America, specifically um, during the healthcare debates. I got really frustrated how disability really frequently got left out of the discussion. Um, even in progressive magazines, I would read articles about when we were debating healthcare that famous time when John McCain, like, did thumbs down and uh, we weren't sure what was gonna happen with um, Medicaid and Medicare and um, just benefits in general. And um, I personally didn't feel like disability was well represented in that time. So um, I would even read in progressive newspapers and, and uh, magazines about how all the people that would be affected by this change, all these marginalized groups. And a lot of times they wouldn't actually even mention people with disabilities at all or it was a tiny side note, even though, um, and I don't want to get on a huge rant here, but yes, healthcare is extremely important for disabled people, not just for medical care, but for things like services, like personal care attendants. And so we really need to be in that discussion. So I wrote this song called I Wait, not about waiting around and doing nothing, like a nihilist or something, um, but how do you wait in that space where you are actively fighting for change and change hasn't come yet because that can be a frustrating place to be. So that is what this tune is about. This is I Wait. Thank you. 
an audience um but that's the end of that song and i'm going to move on i have two more tunes for you um but i am really enjoying this idea of virtual concerts i think it's a cool thing that hopefully is enjoyable for you and i think people with disabilities people in uh, different places in life who maybe don't want to go out really late to watch at home that's pretty cool so um if people who have little kids can watch it with their little kids in their pajamas, which is pretty great compared to trying to take your kid out to a club. So anyways, this next tune um, is Grace on a Tender Hand. It's the very first song I ever wrote. Um, I really didn't start writing all that long ago for somebody who does singing and songwriting for a living now. I started in 2012 um, pretty spontaneously. Uh, shortly after meeting a person named Alan Sparhawk of the band Woe, who is also from Duluth, um, we had a project together and it was really um, just kind of mind blowing to think of what looping could do because I didn't know about it. And right around that time, I started writing my own songs. And so this is the first one, Grace and a Tender Hand. It's on my new album, Learning How to Stay. <coughs> Thank you. 
But if I could bring you peace today, my battle would be won. The way that down with worry, you doubt what you are worth. You question if you'll ever know your place upon the earth. But if you saw what I see, this perfect person standing next to me. If you could kindly let yourself be, your battle would be won. We don't know the outcome, how the story will unfold. We only have a moment, and it is not ours to hold. A place to fall, a time to land. We grow by graves and a tender hand. The beauty of this hidden plan is our battle has been won. <laughs> grateful for all of you that have tuned in um, for the last, I don't know, almost an hour. I'm going to do one last tune, but first I'm going to check the little chat really thing. Does anyone have any questions? This is the time to type it in right now. If I could reach it, let me see it. <laughs> okay, yes, I can reach it. Looking to see if there's any chats I need to know about. Uh, any questions? This is our studio apartment, if you can't tell by here how huge it is. Um, any other questions? No? 757? No questions. Oh, well, thank you so much. You guys are very sweet. So I'm going to do one more tune for you, okay? Um, thank you for listening. I really appreciate you being here. Um, and will you come back to Gill, Massachusetts? Yes, eventually I will. I really do uh, plan to keep touring. I love touring. We've made some really amazing friends all over the world because of it and just seeing things that we never see. So I do plan to get back on the road. Um, I'm writing a book, just so you know, um, about the last three years and being a disabled touring artist and what that has been like and how to like fighting for equal access for the arts has been a big part of what I do. Um, but also just the amazing stories we have. Our first ill-fated trip 
overseas where two of the three people lost their passports. There's a lot of things I got to write down so I don't forget about it. It was pretty crazy. We've had some really big adventures um, and I'm really grateful. So I want to write a book about it. So this summer, I'm not going to be touring very much at all. I'm doing a few shows um, in the Midwest and then maybe a couple of flyouts or whatever, but I'm going to be based in Duluth mostly to write because I want to write this book. Um, and if you want to support that effort, uh, patreon.com slash Galen Lee is how you can join up to help. Um, they giving me some income sort of like right now with this event, right? Doing some things um, that keep me able to be home um, and still pay the bills. So uh, this last tune, because I'm very grateful you're here. I don't want to hold you up too long. This last tune is called Metsukukia, and it means forest flowers in Finnish. Um, and I am not Finnish myself, but I live in northern Minnesota, so there's a lot of Finnish culture up here. And I learned this from a Finnish accordion player many, many, many years ago. Um, it means forest flowers. I don't know what kind of flowers they have in Finland, because as you will hear, this is a very dark tune, um, so uh, I'm not sure what he was thinking about, whoever he or she wrote this tune, what kind of flower they were picturing, but you'll have to let your imagination do the work. So here we go. This is my last tune. I'm Galen Lee, and um, yeah, here we go. Let's go get it. Thank you. 
Um, Central Daylight Time, so right in the middle of the country. Um, please tune in then to bring your kids. Tune in in Europe. Tell all your friends. And if you can, please donate at the Eventbrite link below. But absolutely do not if you can't afford to because we are all in this together. Thank you very, very much for coming tonight. And it's been a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Learned I'm not going to try to be a stand-up comedian, but I probably will still bring three new jokes to the next concert. So have a wonderful night, everybody. Take care, right? I guess, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's some Scottish music to tune out. Here we go, have a great night. I think you've got to press stop right there.